Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I hope this video find you doing well. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I, I just thank God for him being in control no matter what's going on. And we know there's a lot of stuff going on in this state, in this country, in this world. But God is still in control. Hallelujah. We just thank God for that. We um, always can ask that you continue to pray for those who are less fortunate, those who are sick, um, those who can't, can't help themselves going through depression and, and things like that. And folks, pray for those who are taking care of those folks. And also um, pray for those who are in bereavement, those who are uh, suffering from with mourning the loss of a loved one due to COVID or or life's situations, illnesses and, and things like that. People are still dying, car crashes, and it's not just COVID. Even though we're in a pandemic and we know that's a big thing, but the other things of life are still happening. Amen. So pray for those Pray for their, their strength because it can be them today and it can easily be us tomorrow. Amen. And we do have a word from the Lord. We have some teaching. We have some teaching um, this morning and it's going to it's going to be um, some self-examination. It's going to be some self-examination. We're going to talk about a certain thing and um, we want you to look at yourself and you know because we can always think it's somebody else but we have to be like the disciples were when um before jesus was crucified and he had that that supper with them and he told them one of you betrayed me and and they say you know like lord is it i and we have to look within ourselves with this teaching amen amen but before we get into our teaching um, join me in a word of prayer, please. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you that things are as well as they are. We recognize and we know that you are our God, our creator, our Lord, our savior. And we thank you for it. Thank you for loving us in spite of ourselves. We know that we're not perfect. We know that we have flaws, but we also know that you are God. And we thank you for it. Lord, continue to bless, bless this ministry, bless those who, who love you, who love each other. Father, we pray that you continue to bless those who, who hear this word and, and do and live this word. Father, we know that we're in situations now in this world that we've never seen before, but we know that you're still in control. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, which continues to encourage us and let us know who we are and whose we are. Father, we just thank you. Thank you. And we can't thank you enough, but we ask that you continue to bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A word for today is found in the book of James, that third chapter and the 16th verse. And I'm going to give you two versions of, of that, that particular verse so you would better get a better understanding or more clarity out of it. The first version comes from the new King James version, the new King James version. And it reads for where envy and self seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. And from the NIV version, the new international version, it reads for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Amen. And we're going to talk from a, we're going to teach you from a thought today, the danger of earthly wisdom, the danger of earthly wisdom. This is not a shouting message. As I told you before, it's one in which we need to look down in ourselves and say, Lord, is it I? And we want to keep ourselves from earthly wisdom. Amen. See, James asked a question in the same chapter, in, in chapter three, verse, verse 13. He said, who is a wise man and endowed or endued 
with knowledge among you. In other words, he was, he was plainly stating, um, um, who are the people who are considered wise and have knowledge among you? Who do you consider to be wise? Why do you consider them to be wise? And, and why do you consider them to have knowledge or to know something? And he then goes into an explanation that there are two different times, kinds of wisdom on earth. He states in James 3 and 17 that there's a wisdom that comes down from above. Amen. This is the wisdom that God gives us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And people who have this kind of wisdom show it by leading good lives. They lead, they lead a life in which they lead a Christ-centered life. They they do good deeds. <clears throat> Faith without works is there, but they do it with humility. Amen. Not not with pride saying, look, look at me, look what I'm doing, but they do it with humility. When they do it, they don't make a show out of it. And then there's another kind of wisdom. And this wisdom is is earthly. It's 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 unspiritual and it's it's demonic in some cases, as as stated in James three and 15. And from James's point of view, earthly wisdom is not wise at all. Even though we call it earthly wisdom, it's not wise at all because people who have this kind of wisdom tend to be bitterly envious and, and selfishly ambitious, as the NIV version says. So we want to look at this. We want to look at earthly wisdom because it has a lot to do with envy. And we're going to touch on envy a lot in this teaching. And that's that's what we want to look at today. We want we want to examine ourselves to make sure that we don't have this type of spirit or this type of wisdom upon us because it's a dangerous thing. The Bible speaks of envy. It's a dangerous thing. A, a, a person who who is full of envy they a, a per, an envious person is a person who who desires to be like a specific person somebody who's achieved success somebody who has a lot of possessions or they have advantages or they they have a professional position in life and somebody wants to be that person that person is an envious person. It, it, it's a person in which we would label in, in modern black terms, we would call them a hater because they, it, you know, it's not jealousy, but it's envy, you know, because jealousy is, jealousy is, I don't like you because of who you are, but envy is, I don't like you because I want what you got. See, and that's the difference between jealousy and envy. Amen. Jealousy is I don't like you because of what you've got and what you can do. Envy is I don't like you because I want to be you. So that's a hater. And that's what we call haters these days. And that person is full of bitterness and, and full of bitter envy and, and, and also intensely antagonistic and hostile towards the envied person. And that person going and that envy, that envious person resents the success and achievement of the one who is envied. He hates that person or she hates that person. And a person who is envious of another, they'll somehow show that they're envy, envious. They'll, they'll show it through the way they speak about that person. They'll talk about them. They'll dog them out. They'll make them look bad or the way that they act toward that person, the looks that they give, the, the, the cold shoulder that they give this person. And this is a part of that, that earthly wisdom. This is what James is warning us about. This is a part of that earthly wisdom. And the reason it is earthly is because these folks will try to accomplish things or their selfish desires by evil or wicked devices. Satan will plant things in their head. You need to do this in order. And they don't care who they hurt. They don't care how they do it to get there. And we all know folks like that. But today we need to look at ourselves and make sure it's not us also. Because we quickly can point the finger at somebody. But then when we look in the mirror, we, 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 we don't look too long because we can't stand what we see. And some of us are wearing masks. 
when we look in the mirror and we don't identify that that same stuff is in us. That's why we have to self-examine ourselves and make sure that we are not possessed with earthly wisdom or having those envious desires. Amen. See, people who are who are bitterly envious often couple their envy with selfish ambition. Amen. Let me say that again. People who are bitterly envious often couple their their envy with selfish ambition. And please don't misunderstand what I'm saying, because there's nothing wrong with ambition. There's nothing wrong with ambition. You should be ambitious without ambition. You will never achieve anything in life. If you're going to accomplish something, if you set out to do something, you have to have ambition in order to do it. So there's nothing wrong with ambition. Notice I put the adjective in front, selfish, selfish ambition. I'm talking about that 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 selfishly ambitious person who tries to, to leapfrog or try to go around that person who's above them in the pecking order uh, and, 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 and or he tries to discredit the person who is on the same level with them and they feel intimidated by that person or the person who they, they try to um, they, they try to stifle the the legitimate ambition of that person who is just below them. In, in other words, who they feel like threaten their position. You know, if they feel like they're going to be replaced in a position by somebody who is beneath them or below them, they'll try everything in their power to try and make that person seem unqualified or inadequate for that position. And we know folks like that. But is it us today? Is it us today? Are we talking about our brothers and sisters to make them have a negative light in the eye of somebody else because you want them, you want to look down on them or you want somebody to look down on them or feel bad about them so they, so they won't take your place or so they will not be placed above you? Are we doing this? And baby, I'm talking about not just on the job, not just around the home, but I'm talking about in the church also. People who are envious and selfishly ambitious are, are, are not showing wisdom that comes from God. This is not godly to behave this way. They're not leading a godly life. They're not doing good deeds in humility. They may be doing good deeds, but they have selfish motives in doing these things. They, they are in, in, instead they're the cause of of much disorder and evil practice. We know a lot of people who will throw rocks and hide their hand. Amen. They're always having stuff. They're planting seeds of discord in organizations, even a church. You can say something good about somebody. Yeah, that, that's all well and good. But what I heard and I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Amen. And, and, and the disorder comes from their attempts to upset the legitimate chain of order or chain of command and the order of authority in a given organization, which even includes the church, which means that there are envious folks even inside the church trying to jock for position or trying to hold on to what they have. And if they feel threatened, they will do certain things. They'll do things, evil things, to cause that person to stay underneath them. A Amen. Amen. And whether we want to admit it or not, we all know folks. Uh-huh. We all know folks on our job. We know folks in our family and even in the church who always desires to be in the place of other folks. That is envy. Amen. Uh, even in the choir, and we always use the choir. I love my choir, but we always use the choir. How how folks are envious. I should be singing that song. She can't sing it like I can. I ain't going to background because I should be saying, you know, envy. I need to be in that place. I have often gone to ch gone to churches and, and seen an envious spirit on certain preachers when when other folks are preaching and, and the folks are reacting and they sit there with their arms crossed looking with the stank face because it's not them up there preaching and they feel they can do a better job. That's an envious spirit that is earthly wisdom. A amen. That is earthly wisdom. And in reality, these people want to be those folks 
whom they have animosity toward. That is envy. That is earthly wisdom. They'll use all sorts of evil tactics to discredit these people. They'll, they'll, they'll use such things as, as number one, they'll use gossip. They'll, you know, when somebody is saying something good about them, they'll go in their past and say, well, yeah, but you know, where they come from. Or they'll say something that they recently heard, you know, yeah, where they come, but I, I, I heard they still doing this stuff. They'll use this to discredit that person or, or they'll use slander. And slander is the attempt to defame somebody's, defame somebody's character. Yeah, um, they, they, I don't feel that they, they just right. They just, it's just something about them. And they'll put, they'll, they'll sow seeds of discord in somebody's mind, somebody else's mind about this person's character. That is slander. And, and another thing, they'll lie. Yeah, uh huh. Envious people will lie on somebody else in order to get what they want because they want to be who they are. They will intentionally state things that are untrue about somebody to make him or her look bad. This, these are envious people. These are people who use earthly wisdom. An envious person or, or, or someone who uses earthly wisdom will do these things to achieve their selfish ends. To get what they want, they'll do what they have to do. I know Malcolm X once made the statement, by any means necessary. Whether it's good or evil, they will try it. If it's good, they're going to wait on the Lord. But if, e if it's evil, they're going to use their own devices to get what they want. This is earthly wisdom. Now, are you practicing earthly wisdom? Are you doing things towards somebody else because you want to take their place or you want to be them. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about that brother or sister who recently was blessed and talking about what they're doing or how, how wrong they are because you want to be them? Are you talking about that person who's preaching or teaching because you want to be them? Are you talking about that person on your job who's been promoted because you felt that should have been my position? That's earthly wisdom. That is bitter envy that is in you. And we know folks like that, but is it us today? And then I, I thanks be to God, there's another kind of wisdom. And that's the wisdom that God gives. That's the wisdom that, that's given by the Holy Spirit, God, God's Holy Spirit gifts us with that wisdom from above and everybody is not on the same level with that wisdom. So don't start hating or envying anybody who has more wisdom, God given wisdom, because the Holy Spirit is intelligent and he gives a measure of wisdom as he see fit. Well, some people can't handle knowing stuff. <laughs> Some people get beside themselves knowing stuff. So, so in order for us to have the knowledge to remain humble, the Holy Spirit only gives us a certain amount. Amen. And unlike those folks who are envious, that's this wisdom from above. Unlike those folks who are envious, James states in that second part of verse 17, he said, you can identify these folks. He said, these folks are first of all pure. Then he said they're peace loving and they're considerate. They're submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. They are impartial and they're sincere. They don't have all these underlying selfish motives in order to get what they want. Hmm. Is that is, is this person, this person who exercises God's godly wisdom, is it you or can you identify somebody like that? Mm -hmm. They don't envy people around them. They don't want to be them. They don't want to be these people. They respect the proper order of an organization. They respect the way that things are. They don't, they don't use evil practices for selfish purposes in these organizations or in the church. These people are satisfied where God has placed them and they pray to him 
to enlarge their territory. They pray to him to promote them. They pray to him to change their situation. They don't go in trying to do things themselves and mess up and not having Isaac, but having Ishmael because they're not willing to wait on the Lord. They, they, they have they, these people, these people who exercise godly wisdom, they have a full understanding that it's the Lord who gives the increase. See, these folks have joy. These folks have peace because they know that God, that this wisdom is given by the Lord. Whatever they have is given by the Lord. But on the other hand, those folks who are bitterly envious or, or selfishly ambitious, these folks are unhappy. They walk around looking for stuff. And you know, the songwriter, one of the songwriters said back, back in the day, it's written all over your face. You can see stuff. You can see when folks are unhappy. You know, even frown lines and all this stuff. They never smile. They're unhappy because they don't like who they are and where they are. They always want to be somebody else. And it's written all over their face. Because they, they, they want to do, they, they, they can't do what they want to do. And they can't have what they think they should have. And they're never satisfied. Because they're always too distracted by wanting what someone else has. Or wanting to be in the place of someone else. Amen. In James, in James 3 and 18, he said, but those who are truly wise are peacemakers that, that sow peace and, and reap a harvest of righteousness. If you're using godly wisdom, guess what? It's going to show. The righteousness of God, of, of God is going to show in you. It's going to manifest itself on the outside what's growing or increasing on the inside. This is godly wisdom. How you talk, how you walk, folk will see godly wisdom, not earthly wisdom, but they'll see the God in you. A amen. They'll see this. So today, as I heard your close today, my brothers and sisters, we need to examine ourselves. We need to make sure that, that we're not being envious of anybody else because of their possessions, because of their talent, because of their of their popularity, because of their position. We need to we need to really examine ourselves and assess what where, where we are. Are we satisfied where God has us? A -a Amen. Envy is nothing but sin that eventually will eat you up from the inside out. And we have to learn to be content wherever we are and allow the Lord to order our steps and to direct our paths. That's godly wisdom. But I just wanted to talk to you today about the dangers of earthly wisdom. Amen. Amen. Not a shouting message, but good teaching if you take it in. A amen. Every message ain't going to make you shout, but, but good teaching. And it's from the word of God to make you examine yourself. Am I in the position to say, Lord, wherever you have me, I'm satisfied. Or are we still looking around? I should be doing that. I can do that better than them. Amen. But God didn't have you there. So there's a danger in earthly wisdom, in earthly wisdom. Amen. We thank you for tuning in with us. Thank you for, for your continued support of this channel, of this ministry. We just thank God for you. Amen. We just thank you for your the, the prayers that you send up. We thank you for sharing these words with, with um, your friends and your family. We, we appreciate that. Amen. All, all over this country, you know, that you're sending videos and you're talking about what the word of God, because we can't congregate like we want to. But we thank God that you're doing that. We thank God for your financial support. Our, um, our trustee committee will be back at the church this coming Saturday, November the 6th. Amen. And we'll tell you about future um dates where they when they'll be there they'll be there november the 6th this saturday coming at 10 a.m come by do a drive by um have your tithes or your your contributions whatever god lays on your heart 
Amen. Be a, be a blessing to, to the Lord. It, it's not going to the preacher. So don't think what you hear going to the preacher. Amen. God, God takes care of us in his way. Amen. So you have to you have to do what God has said before. Bring your tithes to the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Amen. This is what God said. And he said, prove me now and see when I open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to receive. I dare you to try God now. Amen. And we thank God for our covenant partners. Those who are not members per se of the church, but you join this ministry while we're in this, this situation and you, you're giving to God out of your heart. And we thank God for that. Amen. And if you're mailing it in, that address is Mizpah Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia 31515. That's Mizpah Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia 31515. I got to get out of here. As always, I tell you and remind you, pray for the sick. Because one day it may be your turn when you can't pray for yourself and somebody's going to have to pray for you. So pray for the sick. Pray for their strength. Pray, pray for their healing. Amen. If it's God's will for their healing, pray for their healing. Pray for those who are taking care of them. Amen. Pray for them who are taking care of them. Pray for those who are in bereavement. As I always say, you know, Please pray for the leadership of this country, you know, and, and of the world. Things are just just in a bad state when um, look at gas, unleaded, regular unleaded gas is like almost three dollars and, and twenty five cent or, you know, higher in California is almost five dollars. Last year it was like two dollars and fifteen cents, you know, showing how things are just going crazy and going awry but pray for the leadership of this this country and this world also when you go out make sure that you are still being safe wear your mask watch your distance with people and wash your hands so please do those three things all right i'm gone i'm through i love you all Make sure you continue. Make sure you pray for me as I pray for you. I love you all. So I want you to have a wonderful rest of the day. You know, it's getting chilly, so be safe. I, I have a wonderful rest of this day, and we'll see you back Wednesday. So take care of yourself and each other. God bless you.